welcome to a special edition of Hawthorne Today. July 19th through the 23rd will be the 44th annual Hawthorne Community Fair and Parade. And with us today to set the tone for this great summer event that's coming up are Dr. Fred Morgan, who's our parade director and a member of the Hawthorne Kiwanis Club, and Mr. Brian Wilson of the Beach Boys, who's returning to his hometown to serve as our Grand Marshal. Gentlemen, welcome. Welcome. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Fred, tell us a little bit about our fair and parade this year. Give us a little clue. Well, the fair, again, I'll say the dates again so we remember them, and it's July the 19th through the 23rd. And on July 22nd, which is Saturday, at 11 o'clock at 138th and Hawthorne Boulevard, we will start the parade, and it will start on time. <laughs> In the parade, there's over 15 bands, probably 20 drill teams, animals of all kinds, horses, dignitaries, and of course, our Grand Marshal this year, Ryan Wilson. That's excellent. Now, what's our theme? The theme is Pages of the Past. And the reason that was selected as the theme is several reasons. One of them is that for the last 30 years, Mattel Company has been housed in Hawthorne, and it's Barbie's birthday. So we want to celebrate that. It's also a celebration for Northrop Aircraft, which has been in Hawthorne for many, many, many years. But besides that, a special person who wrote music is given the world a taste of good culture and good flavor and good style. And so we thought number one was Brian Wilson. Now we've had other people, Marilyn Monroe, who's lived in Hawthorne, has been a Grand Marshal, and others. But no one has ever been selected that has given the world so much culture and so much flavor as Brian has and his accompaniment with the Beach Boys in his writing and giving the world the music that he's given it. So it was certainly an easy selection this year. Sure. Brian, when you were growing up in Hawthorne, uh, I imagine you got to see the parade maybe during the summertime. Did you ever imagine that you would be heading up that parade? Well, not really, no. How could I have, you know? I mean, there would be no way that I could have, but uh, it, it's sure nice to, to go back and uh, reminisce, you know? Oh, yeah. With some of the people that, that, that were uh, some guy mics for me, you know, as I came home. My father was a little bit rough on my on me. <laughs> sure. But my friends helped me through high school, you know, so I'm sure that made a difference. You've probably been asked a thousand times, how did you get into music? Music was a sidetrack for me at first. I was going to be a psychologist. You know, I wanted to, I wanted to be a psychologist, and I wanted to be able to uh, teach people about the first two years of life, the very delicate years of sure. life, you know. And uh, I, I, well, the Beach Boys had a record uh, right in the middle of my uh, junior college episode, so we took a left turn. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, uh, I'm not a music buff, but I do appreciate rock and roll because I'm from your era. Now, what the, it seems to me the aspect of the uh, the Beach Boys of Brian Wilson are the lyrics. They're so pure. The message is so simple. Oh, what is your secret? You write. You wrote all the lyrics. Well, the lyrics were. Uh, came, but the, the lyrics a little disco came first over the music. And with a guy named Roger Christian who wrote the lyrics. But most of my own songs were written with, uh, inspired by the sound or the music vibration before the lyrics were developed. I have a theory of music. I feel that lyrics are created by the melody, although it's not a logical process. It's not something you'd say, yeah, I mean, we, we actually thought about every, every word to the melody, but the melody itself creates the lyric, although people think that they're actually creating it themselves. Sure. But Brian, one of the things that's important about your songs and the lyrics that you people have been singing for years are of you and from the heart. Incidents is about cruising town. That's what you did. When you wrote Be True to Your School, you were saying Be True to Hawthorne High School. <laughs> and they don't realize that eight measures of that song has the original fight song in it. And some of the other, what was it, 10 or 12 different other fight songs and high school remembrances. But all of your experiences as growing up and maturing and developing have shared that message through your heart, through those words. And I think that that, too, is something that's unique to you. Yeah. Now, you've been asked this before. <laughs> you mentioned before the million-dollar F. Tell us about it. 
Well, I'm glad Brian is here to defend me. <laughs> I've been embarrassed by that million dollar F. Um, Brian was asked in a music writing class, and let's, let's say right here in Above Board, I think it's unique for a school, a Hawthorne High School, yes. to have provided guitar classes and singing classes and band classes and music composition classes while you were still in high school. And Brian took advantage of all of that. Well, in the composition class, the writing, music writing class, Brian was asked to write a 120 major sonata for the piano. And he wrote 32 majors of music with chords in it. And those chords later turned into be, of course, the surfing song that became so popular. And that's why he can laugh going to the bank with a million dollars with the F. <laughs> <laughs> but the F came about because it wasn't 120 major. It didn't change keys five times, and it was full of parallelism, which he's made and capitalized on, and backward progressions. And uh, Brian knows that, and so we kind of laugh together about it. But I think the thing that comes out of all this was the fact that a good old P. Pick and Hawthorne High School in a small town could offer you the classes and the training and the opportunity that you had at that time to use that. And he did. He used it to his advantage. Well, I was able to create music the way Bach did, of course. No. You know, Bach was a perfect musician. Uh, I learned, I came up the, uh, a different way. Uh, I, picked, I took a little from here, a little from there, and there and there, and then that, that she had the Beach Boys style, you know. But uh, it was all a matter of just adapting to the, the times that I was living in. If I, if I came along 10 years or 15 years earlier, I would have been making arrangements like the four freshmen. There. Well, I do remember you locking yourself back in the practice rooms back there and listening to them <laughs> doing some things and playing the fourth on the piano. Yeah, that's true. That's true. When you were starting out with the group, the Beach Boys, yeah. and I guess there were uh, rock groups all over town, weren't there? There were rock groups throughout the South Bay. We were very lucky to have risen out of South Bay and gotten into a more national scene, you know. And that uh, United States area, you know what I mean? Which is one small area in the whole world, but it's probably the greatest music making area in the whole world. I mean, I mean, you know, America has turned out first one and you know, a lot of people. But did, could you imagine or picture that you, Brian, and the Beach Boys were gonna set be the symbol, be the representative of California of a lifestyle, and that what you were doing was going to last for several generations. Well, what they did was, we did our songs, and people that thus made our image for us. They fought, fed us back with what they thought our image was. It's a funny thing. We kind of would make the music, and then the journalists all around the country would, would, would then thus, over the years, slowly shaped and molded our image, which was California, sunshine, and girls, and the seashore, and the sand, you know, and sand. You know, looking around us here, we're obviously in a, in a recording studio right now, and it, it looks to me like it's high tech. And like I said, I'm, I'm not an aficionado. I don't even know what I'm looking at. But can another Brian Wilson succeed today? Can, is there going to be another Brian Wilson, the pioneer? Because you set a standard. Like Star Rover again, me? Or? No, the success. To be innovative like you were. Well, the style you created. It depends. Uh, I, I, I would say that. Uh, we're, we have a carte blanche. I mean, you know, I can't argue with that, that God has given me a carte blanche to create music, so I have to be careful what I do with it, you know. But uh, it was given to me years ago. I mean, he just threw a carte blanche in my face and said, go ahead, get to work, you know, create music for people. And that's just what I did. And you don't fool around when you feel that door opening like this and you see the whole picture, the bigger picture of what's going on in your life. You know, you uh, immediately, you know, snap the gear. <laughs> The kids that are out that will be watching this program, the kids that will be waving at you as you ride down Hawthorne Boulevard, right. what advice can you give the kids? Whether they want to be doctors, they want to be musicians? Well, I, how do you mean? What advice? Do, well, how, what, how do you well, somebody that started out, you know, basic, you're, I mean, internationally acclaimed. Are you talking about to get into music? Anything, to music? succeed. I would say uh, uh, use, be wise with your anger. Um, uh, it, the angrier you feel about things inside, the better you do because you're more positive. Anger probably is more positive than any other emotion I can think of. So just, I, I don't know, be, I can't really think of, I wouldn't know exactly what to say, but I do know this, that success, if it comes fast, sometimes it can throw you for a loop, you know, it, it, it confuses you. You know, you gotta be, keep that bigger picture in mind as to what you're doing and, and know a little about everything, just a little about everything in order to know what direction to go in, you know.
That's the main thing, is that direction that you want to go in. Fred, any last things you can share with us on the fair and the parade coming up next month? Well, I'd like to share uh, something with uh, Brian. And when he did start out, uh, he and his group, and they've got some activities around the community in Hawthorne throughout the South Bay. And I remember even myself going out and selling records. So because when you first started, it was a penny a record, and so we went practically door to door to sell those and through a Melody Music Store in Hawthorne. Yeah, exactly. Remember that? And, store, of course. <laughs> and you uh, would come in, and we would work with the records and so forth. And that's where I helped some of your brothers with music lessons. But Besides that, there were about 1,500 bands in the city of Hawthorne on every block, almost, it seemed like, and we were developing sound ordinances, and everybody was screaming because the drums in the garage were either too loud or to yes. do all that, and you feathered that. So your direction to success is setting the goal and sticking with it, and I think that part of your success is due to the fact that you have that message in your heart, and you're willing to share that with it. It may be God-given, that may be true, but you're willing to share that with others, and that's exactly what your music expresses, and it expresses the feelings of the times of our generation, and so it will go on and on. And I think that's the important uh, the message that you, you really have to give to people. The city of Hawthorne is honoring you because of what the gift that God has given you and you've given the world in your music. And it's neat having you as our Grand Marshal, and as you wave, I hope you wave with good pride. And by the way, your chenille letter for your baseball playing at Hawthorne High School is still there, and we will give it to you. So you oh, hooray! <laughs> hooray! That's great, Fred. We encourage each of the residents in the city or the whole South Bay area to come on out to the city of Hawthorne on July 22nd. Remember, the parade starts promptly at 11 o'clock. With you as director, it will start promptly. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> okay. Gentlemen, I want to thank you both for taking the time. And you, Brian, especially, you for interrupting your session today no to share with us no in the community. I think it's all for the, for the better. I'll be on the curb waving at you also on July 22nd. Okay. Okay. If you'd like, if you'd like more information about this year's community fair and parade, you can telephone 679. 3222 or drop by the Hawthorne Memorial Center where the fair office is located. And I want to thank you for watching Hawthorne today.